Sports Network presents the Canadian Football League Eastern Division Final from Exhibition Stadium in Toronto, Ontario, the Ottawa Rough Riders against the Toronto Argonauts. Today's CFL action is brought to you by Chevy Trucks and your local Chevrolet dealer who invite you to see the new Chevy S10S for 1983. And by the Hilton Hotel Corporation. When American business hits the road, American business stops at Hilton. Hilton, America's business address. And by Budweiser Light. When you bring out your best, you deserve ours. Number seven, a cornerback, Carl Braisley. Number nine at halfback, Ricky Ray. Number 38 at halfback, Charles Johnson. Number 15 at safety, Billy Hardy. George Brancato and the rest of the Ottawa Rough Riders. Beginning on the left side at left end, number 76, Rick Moore. At left tackle, number 58, Earl Wilson. At right tackle, number 64, Leon Leskevich. <laughs> Right defensive end, number 79, Rusty Olsen. The three linebackers, number 70 on the outside, Ed Jackson. Number 37, John Pointer. And the other linebacker, number 41, Tim Berryman. And now the cornerbacks, number 13, Daryl Wilson. And number 24, Jojo Heath. Number eight, Harold Woods. And number 29, Merv Walker. And at safety, the outstanding defensive player in the Eastern Conference, number 31, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, head coach Bob Obilovich and the rest of the Toronto Argonauts. All right, there you have the lineups that will begin this game for the Toronto Argonauts and the Ottawa Rough Riders. And Leaf, I know you're excited. Well, I certainly have, Kevin. It's been a long time for these Toronto fans to see their team in the playoffs, and here they find themselves in the Eastern Conference Final today. They're up against the Cinderella team, the Ottawa Rough Riders, and they seem to be peaking just at the right time for these playoffs. I'm looking forward to just an outstanding ball game. I don't think the weather will play a major factor at all. All right, the Argonauts have not been to the playoffs since 1977. The Rough Riders, they've been here nine straight times under George Brancato. As Leaf said, they are 5-11 on the regular season. They knocked off Hamilton a week ago to get here and will return to Exhibition Stadium in Toronto, Ontario for more football right after this. back to Exhibition Stadium in Toronto, Ontario. Kevin Slayton along with Leif Pedersen. You're looking live here in Toronto. The fog is beginning to lift. It was so heavy just a little while ago as George Brancato gets the Rough Riders ready and you could barely pick up what was going on on the far side of the field. But it is not that way now. Things are starting to clear up, Leif, and I'm sure that both squads love that. 
Well, they certainly will. I don't think they wanted to play a game in the fog here. There you have a look at it. You know, Exhibition Stadium here in Toronto is situated right on the shores of Lake Ontario. The moisture coming in off the lake, but as Kevin said, it looks as though it's lifting, and we should be in for a very entertaining afternoon of football. Second at about six for the Rough Riders now. Just past midfield, Starkey will throw it. Over the middle for Reed. He's really belted. The pass was behind him anyway. The crowd loves that hit, and it's third down, and that'll be a kicking situation. Zach Henderson was the man who delivered the lethal blow on that play. Well, Kevin Starkey, here you see it. The Toronto Argonauts coming with the blitz. Ed Jackson and Zach Henderson do a number on Jim Reed, and they'll have to come with the punt. There's Zach Henderson again. He's from the University of Oklahoma, and he's a one-man wrecking crew. The last time these two teams met, he put three of the Ottawa Rough Rider players out of the game, including Skip Walker. Jerry Organ will be kicking it now for the Ottawa Rough Riders. And he gets a good foot into it, hanging it very, very high. Coming down on the far side for Steve Ackroyd. Ackroyd down the sidelines, gets away. He's got one man to beat, and he's got a block ground in front, but he's pulled down from behind. The crowd loves it, and Toronto will return for more at Exhibition Stadium right after this. There you see him, Jan Carinci on your screen. A little seam, and he finds it down the sidelines. And You'll see coming into your picture, number 24, John Park. He makes a saving tackle, but what a great way to start your offensive series when you're in Ottawa's territory at the 43-and-a-half-yard line. 57-yard return, and there's the man who saved the touchdown. So Carinci has put Toronto in good shape. And Leaf, one thing to note, Zach Henderson of Toronto was injured on the play where he delivered that blow against Reed of Ottawa. So we'll have to wait and see if he comes back. Condridge Holloway on his first play from scrimmage. Under heavy pressure, a flag is down. He gets away on the far side. He's run out of bounds near the first down, but don't forget the flag is down. And when it's dropped in your backfield, it looks like it'll be holding. Nine, nine times out of 10, that's what's gonna be called. Now we talked today about the Ottawa Rough Riders getting that pressure on Holloway. That time they didn't get to him, but they flushed him out of the pocket, and I'm sure Bob Abilovich does not have that in his game plan. He'd like Holloway to be throwing that ball, not running it. And you know he doesn't have that uh, holding call in the playbook. There's I'll tell you what, Bob. that is not the way you want to start your offensive series off, first series of the game, a holding. There's the Toronto backfield, Greer, McGee, Newman, and Pearson. Remember, they'll throw to just about every one of those guys with Holloway leading the attack. He's not prejudiced against any receiver. He'll throw to them all. Smith, Mangold, Perone, Malinowski up front. Now they've got a front uh, five of some big horses. Condridge Holloway, you might remember him down in Knoxville, Tennessee. He led the volunteer attack for those four years when he was there. Looking to his left, now going back to the right deep. Down for Greer. Greer makes the catch at the five, and he's in for the touchdown. regular season 85 receptions 1400 yards 11 touchdowns he's the big play man for the Argonauts and no bigger play here in this Eastern Conference final Conrich Holloway Terry Greer was not his initial receiver but he puts the ball up watch the job that he does he knows where that football is Carl Braisley the cornerback he cannot locate it Terry Greer adjusted the ball tremendous reception by Terry Greer and boy we talked about Toronto starting with a holding penalty that's the way to answer that kind of setback is to come back and there he is Terry Greer Dean Dorsey on for the extra point a 53 yard touchdown pass the kick is up and good it's seven and nothing Toronto there was a flag down on the play the touchdown play it was pass interference against Ottawa we will return to exhibition stadium in Toronto Ontario the Argonauts lead it seven to nothing Two big plays so far, Leaf, have burned the Rough Riders. Well, they really have, and give the Argonauts credit. They had that weak layoff. We wondered how they would react to that, and I think we found out in a hurry that they're ready to play today. Ottawa with a first down at their own 27. They miss connections on the snap, and very wisely, Starkey just covers it at the 25. Rusty Olsen there to tag him down. There is Ackroyd in the Toronto secondary in there for Henderson. We mentioned that Henderson injured his ankle on the previous series. Starkey on second now will throw the ball knocked out of his hand. That's a loose football. Ottawa covers it at their own five yard line. Larry Titley was the man who fell on at the center. Leon Leskowitz was the man who knocked it loose so they will have to punt it away. 
Well, there you see Larry Tidley on your screen, and he does a good job of recovering that fumble. Uh, two unfortunate plays in a row for the Ottawa Rough Riders. You see right here, it appears to me, Earl Wilson, the defensive tackle, comes through, and just as Kevin Stark, he's trying to throw the football, he knocks it loose. Nevertheless, the Riders do retain possession, but they'll have to kick it away. And they'll have to kick it out of their own end zone. Jerry Organ will do the kicking, and he'll be booting it to either Jan Corinci or David Newman standing in Ottawa territory. And the kick is blocked. It's still loose at the five-yard line. Reed picks it up for Ottawa, and he gets to about the 15-yard line. Ed Jackson was the man who blocked it for Toronto. Now the Argos have the football, and this crowd is loving every minute of it. They're loving every minute of it because the Toronto Argonauts are really making their own breaks. A good punt return, the touchdown pass to Terry Greer, and now an outstanding play on the special teams. As Kevin called it, Ed Jackson, the outside linebacker, he just breaks through, no chance, up in the air, tips the football. Ottawa did recover it, but it won't matter. Toronto's in great scoring position. You know, Leaf, it looked like on the replay, as you can see, John Park didn't even block his man. Number 24 just let Jackson come right through. Well, Bob Obilovich is going for the touchdown. Third and goal. Remember, Canadian football, third down is your final down of possession. They need a yard. It's Minner, and Minner fumbles the football, and Ottawa has held, and they've recovered it. It looked like Jack Williams got on it or made the hit, I should say, and Brazley is the one who fell on the football. So Ottawa with a big defensive stand. Bob Abilovich, you see him on the sidelines. He can't believe it. It appeared as though Cedric Benner was going to be into the end zone for the touchdown, but 75, Rick Sovieta comes through from his linebacking position, and he gets a hand on the ball and strips it loose. Carl Brazley makes a recovery, and what a break for the Riders. Carinci and Newman waiting for Jerry Organ's punt. They are standing at about the Ottawa 48, a bad snap, he's in trouble again, and he just elects to down it, and that'll be a safety. Well, when you're in a playoff game, Leaf, you don't like to see those kind of things happening on your special teams. Now well, you certainly don't. Special teams play such an important part in the Canadian Football League, at least 25% of the game. But let me tell you, I think Jerry Organ made a pretty good play there. If he had tried to kick the ball, it certainly would have been blocked, maybe would have given up a touchdown. This way, bad snap, they give up two points, we will have to kick the ball away, but nevertheless, that's better than giving up a touchdown. Harold Woods, number eight, was streaking through from the right side of your picture, and he once again went right around John Park, number 24. So Park is certainly a weakness blocking on those kicks. You think maybe they're gonna try and put someone else in there, John Park? We'll have to definitely uh, take a look and see if that happens the next time they go into a punting situation. Well, there's George Brancato on the sidelines, and he has to be concerned. He's Behind 9 nothing, and you don't want to get those Toronto Argonauts too far ahead on you. All right, this is the Eastern Conference Championship game coming your way live here on ESPN. We've got the Grey Cup, which is the Super Bowl of Canadian football, live for you next Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern time, 10 a.m. Pacific time. And that will come right from here, Exhibition Stadium in Toronto, Ontario. The Grey Cup Championship game of Canadian football. So Ottawa will have to take the free kick from their own 35-yard line. Oregon will be kicking it on a trio of deep receivers back there for the Toronto Organauts. Terry Greer on the near side is deep, along with 24, JoJo Heath, who is in the middle. Greer will take it at about his 23-yard line. Terry Greer going to the right side, has a lot of blockers over there. And he is pulled down as he gets out near the 45-yard line. Up there on the hit for the Rough Riders was Charles Johnson. Well, not bad field position for the Toronto Argonauts. This is their third possession, and they have had things pretty much their own way here in the first quarter. And there you see Terry Greer, what an exciting player. He's been out of Alabama. 21-yard return on the kickoff, and they'll start it from their own 44, already leading at 7 to nothing. Holloway with that 53-yard touchdown pass to Terry Greer. The quick screen goes to Greer. And he is across midfield into Ottawa territory before he is pulled down by Doug Seymour, the veteran out of the University of Missouri, but a pickup of 15 on the play for Toronto. Toronto takes advantage of that unlimited motion in the CFL. Everybody goes to the left side. The quick screen back to wide receiver Terry Greer. Watch number 59, Roland Mango, get out there and get a good block. And 
He's got the reception and a first down. And boy, the Toronto Argonauts look impressive as they've come out here in the first quarter just to having everything their own way. Greer already with two receptions, a very exciting player when he gets his hands on the football. 85 catches on the regular season. The inside handoff this time goes to Brock, and he picks up short yardage. Holloway will throw on second down. Down the middle he goes, and he's got his man, David Newman. Newman tries to get a block, slips and falls as he tries to cut it upfield. And the hit was made by Brazley, making sure that he stayed down. Terry Greer tried to throw the downfield block, a pickup of 24 for David Newman. First down at the 24-yard line for Toronto. Holloway will throw. They don't make any bones about it. They don't keep anybody in the backfield. For Greer in the end zone, Brazley nearly intercepts it, drops the football. Lots of pushing and shoving going on in that end zone, Leaf. Well, there certainly was, and the official choosing not to make a call there, but give Carl Brazley some credit. You know, he was burned already early in the first quarter by Terry Greer. That time he stays with him step for step, man-to-man -man coverage, and Carl Brazley really had a good shot at Picking up the interception here, not the greatest the pass Holloway's ever thrown, but look at the good position Brazley has that time. That's the first time Holloway has misfired. Carl Brazley, the 5'11", 175 pounder out of Kentucky. It is second and 10 for the Argonauts, moving from the Ottawa 24 yard line and leading it nine to nothing. So Dorsey will attempt it from about the 27 yard line. It'll be a 27 yard field goal out of Jan Carinci's hole. At a pretty difficult angle. The ball is up, and it is good. So Dorsey adds three points to the Argos' lead, and they now lead Ottawa 12 to nothing with two and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Dorsey to kick off for Toronto. Ottawa elected to receive the kickoff after the field goal. Brazley at the seven yard line. He's across the 20, cuts it outside, is in trouble, and down he goes, and he crosses the 25. After a successful field goal in Canadian Football League, the receiving team gets the option. They can either scrimmage from the 35 or return the kickoff. So with a first down now, Starkey will operate from his own 38-yard line. The handoff goes to Skip Walker. Walker runs out of a tackle. Uh, now he heads upfield, and he's brought down by Steve Ackroyd, but he crosses his own 50, has another first down. Well, he's the man they're counting on today. Get that offense moving, and Skip Walker has a pickup of 14 yards there. What a job his offensive line does for him. They had to be the definite key in Hamilton last week when they defeated the Tiger Cats. And have a look at that, Kevin. We're going to have trouble seeing the players pretty soon if this keeps coming. Well, I mentioned it kept getting lower, and it certainly is. You can hardly see the opposite side of the field. Starkey to throw on first down. It is intercepted. Scott Pointer has it for Toronto, and he threw into a crowd, Leaf. Well, he certainly did. That's a pass that Kevin Starkey would like to have over again. We talked about the maturity and the immaturity sometimes of a young quarterback. That time, definitely the immature. Immaturity. He should not have thrown that football. Watch John Pointer. We just talked about him as being one of the bright spots in that Argonaut defense. He makes the interception. And boy, Toronto Argonauts are really making their own breaks today. Second turnover for the Rough Riders here in the first quarter. And that for Pointer is his second interception of the season. The fog creeping in off Lake Ontario, and it's getting harder and harder for these players to see down on the field. 20 years ago, they had a great cup final here that was suspended in the fourth quarter. They had to replay the final five plus minutes the next day because of the fog. Holloway wants to go for all of it down the near sideline, and he's got his man, that is Pearson, for the touchdown. McGee with a great block, but Pearson has the Toronto touchdown. Well, there he is, Paul Pearson, the fine Canadian slot back from the Simon Fraser University and Conrad Holloway. Pearson running it out and up down the sidelines. Charles Johnson, there's no way he can stay with him. A fine catch, and watch the block coming in here. You can't quite see it from Scott McGee. I'm sure from another angle, we'll see that fine block. But there he is. That's not bad offense, Kevin, when you go 62 yards in just two plays. And boy, oh boy, have the Toronto Argonauts done their homework, and they are they ever ready today. Well, you recall, they just took two plays to score their first touchdown. That came on a 53-yard bomb from Holloway to Greer. So Dorsey is on for the extra point. That was the final play of the first quarter, by the way. And his boot is perfect. So Toronto now has up their lead to 19 to nothing. And they lead over the Ottawa Rough Riders at the end of this first quarter. We will return to Exhibition Stadium for more live playoff action right after this. 
we'll get a chance here to see that great touchdown reception by Paul Pearson. You know, already in this first half, Codrich Holloway, five for seven for 159 yards and two DDs, and that shows you why right there. A pickup of 15, they've got a first down. This is Skip Walker, tries the right side, runs into trouble, breaks out of that, tries to cut it back, still on his feet, won't go down, and he's finally pulled down. Harold Woods was the last man who had a hand on him, but the man who forced him out of the original hole was Rick Moore, number 76. Kevin, one thing that's interesting, you know, there's been so much talk here in Toronto this week about the rushing of Skip Walker, but he really hasn't they played the Argonauts twice this year, of course, lost both games to them, and he really hasn't had good games playing against them. And there's Paul Pearson. He scored a second touchdown for the Argonauts. Fine receiver coming into this game through the regular season, 62 receptions, just missed that 1,000-yard mark for 972 yards. You know, Ottawa looks upon these deficits as some sort of an appetizer. They trailed Hamilton 17 nothing a week ago, and they came back to win it. Holloway wanted to go outside for Greer. Now he gets away, and he can move it on the far side. Slides down at about the 44-yard line of Ottawa. Ricky Ray was giving chase, but Conrad's Holloway has another Toronto first down, a pickup of 15 yards on the play. He's had such a sensational season for the Argonauts, all-time or all-time best in a single season for completions and yardage. And remember the likes of Joe Theismann play for the Argonauts. This is Brock on the handoff over the left side, and he pulls his way for about five or six. The fog is lifting once again here in Toronto, so Leaf is playing games with us. It uh, was not too bad at kickoff, then it got worse. Now it's gotten better again. Actually quite pleasant now, and you know, for this time of the year up in Toronto, Canada, can, we can see snow on the ground and some cold temperatures. We're very fortunate that we have this type of day, and I know for the players, they're enjoying this type of weather. Dean Dorsey will try for the field goal from about his 47. Corinci will be holding. They try to add three more. It is blocked at the line of scrimmage. Seymour bursting through. He wants to pick it up. And he finally is one of the players that helps cover the football. I'm not sure if it was Seymour that actually blocked it. Finally falling on it was Jonathan Sutton. We'll return to Exhibition Stadium for more Ottawa with a big break. Let's see if they can capitalize. We'll return right after this. Starkey still in at quarterback for Ottawa, so Isaac still waiting patiently on the sidelines for his chance on first down. Starkey will go to the air. He's got a man wide open, and it's intercepted. Merv Walker intercepted the football. His receiver was wide open, Carl Powley, but Starkey hung the ball up there, almost like a punt. He really did, Kevin. That's an excellent observation. Carl Powell, who they say maybe is the fastest man in Ottawa Rough Rider history, he was at the camp of the Washington Redskins, but you hit it right on the right on the head. Kevin Starkey just quite simply hung this ball too high. Powell wide open, but Merv Walker, who was covering Pat Stoke with the inside receiver, had a chance to get over and make that interception. There you see Merv Walker. He's been a big addition to that secondary of the Argonauts this year. He came a long way from the inside hash mark all the way to the sidelines to make that interception. Holloway now will throw the football on second down, and he's got Greer, and that is close to a first down, and I believe he's got it. Ricky Ray was defending, but Greer is just too strong. Well, when you've got a receiver that finished the regular season with 85 receptions, no surprise to me that when the pressure's on, he's the guy you're going to go to. Just a simple out pattern, but Carl Bracey, the cornerback, he has to respect the speed of Terry Greer. He's been beaten once deep already, and he'll have to give up those out patterns. 12-yard pickup for the Argos, and that's a big play. They got themselves out of a hole. They were at their own six-yard line. Holloway now to throw it on first down. Steps inside the rush, and now throws for Greer, and Greer makes a diving catch, coming back right in front of Brazley. Leaf, when he threw that football, Greer wasn't even paying attention. He was just a decoy. Well, you're absolutely correct. You know, Holloway rolling to the left side of the field. Greer was not in the batter. He was just really standing around. Holloway says, listen, I got to get you involved here. And he just threw the ball to the outside where Brasley couldn't make a play on it. And Greer made an outstanding catch. Picked up two yards on that play, just 23 yards unofficially on seven carries for Walker. He had 253 yards and broke a Canadian playoff record a week ago. Starkey in trouble, and he's bulldozed down. Tim Berryman lays his shoulder on him. And so Ottawa will have to punt it away once again. And Chris Isaac has to be talking to himself on the Ottawa sideline. When am I going to get my first down? The quick screen to Terry Greer. Cuts it inside. Has plenty of blockers. Goes back outside. And now it's going to be a foot race. And he loses it. He's knocked out of bounds on the far side. It was Billy Hardy that caught up with him. But my goodness.
this is that Greer, an exciting football player, when he gets his hands on the ball. Leap, he didn't even wait for his blockers. He just said, see you later. You're absolutely right. He just has that binding speed, and when he gets into the open field, is he ever an exciting performer? From Alabama State, number 10, Terry Greer. And when he breaks it downfield, watch the block. Here he is, number 32, Dave Newman on uh, Charles Johnson. Not only a good receiver, Newman a good blocker downfield as well, but there's Terry Greer, five catches, and boy, oh boy, has he been the number one man for the Argonauts this year. Five catches for 143 yards, that play covering 43 yards. And now, Holloway going for him in the end zone. No flag is dropped. Greer wanted an interference call. He says Brazley was holding him. But the referee says no dice, and it'll be second down with 4-10 left in the first half. Well, they had a little pushing and shoving going on there, but, you know, Carl Brazley, he has his right to play the football as well, and I'm sure that's the way the officials saw that play. So it'll be second and 10 for the Argonauts from the Ottawa 15-yard line. 11 first downs thus far for Toronto, six for Ottawa. Kind of tells the story. The Rough Riders just really haven't been able to get anything going here in the first half, and when they have, mistakes have cost them. A big day for Conridge Holloway through the air, better than 250 yards. He's hit on 11 of 15 so far. Second and 10, he's going to have to hit on this one. He lost it in the corner for Greer. Touchdown, Toronto. Brazley was beaten again. Missouri State. 
with that big catch. And it's first and goal from the five for Toronto. They've marched nearly the length of the field for this touchdown. The quick pitch comes outside the block, and he carries it down the left. Touchdown, Toronto. And there is a flag now. And it is against Toronto. Receptions for Greer, the man we were talking about, 158 yards and two touchdowns. Holloway will put it in the air. Second down from the 10-yard line. He's going to do just that. Wants to go for Newman. Newman turns it upfield. He claims he was interfered with. And Leaf, he may have a case. Well, he was running a little flat pass and then turned it upfield, and he was bumped. And he might have a bit of a case for interference there. And nevertheless, it will not be called. The Toronto Argonauts are stalled. That procedure penalties cost them a touchdown, as it turns out. Dean Dorsey will come on. Holloway was arguing for the Toronto Argonauts cause, but to no avail. And Dorsey will have a tough angle from which to boot this one. Parinci will be the holder. Let's see where they'll put it down. They're going to spot it at about the 17-yard line. He's already booted a 27-yarder, and he's had one block today. 26-0 is the count right now. It's down. It's up. And he's got it. So Dorsey nails it from 17 yards out. Toronto goes on top 29 to nothing as the rain starts to come down once again here in Toronto. A big first half for the Argonauts, just 14 seconds remaining. And we've talked much about Ottawa's ability to come back, Leaf. They were down 17 nothing at one point to Hamilton a week ago, trailed 17 to three at the half, came storming back to win it. 29 points is a long way to come back from. Well, at halftime last week, they were only down by 14, and with 30 minutes of football to play, you can come back using your running game today. Has to be a different story. They're going to have to put the ball up in the air if you want to have any chance of coming back with 29 points. Let's just go over a few of these statistics that the Argonauts have amassed here in the first half. Condrich Holloway, of course, 16 of 23, 354 yards and three TDs. That sounds like a total game total, but you have to remember, that's just the first half. Terry Greer is fine wide receiver. Six catches, 158 yards, two DDs. Dave Newman, three for 64. And of course, the fine slot back as well. Paul Pearson, two for 76 and one TD. So you can see by those st statistics alone how much they have dominated the Ottawa Rough Riders. Deep for the Argonauts to receive Jerry Organ's kickoff will be Townsend, number 30, Heath, number 24, and Greer, number 10. And that man, number 10, Terry Greer, has just put on, as we said, a spectacular show thus far. Oregon steps into it. We're underway in the second half. It comes down to Heath at his own 10-yard line. JoJo Heath with a seam up the middle. He breaks into the clear, and he's brought down. He was slowed first by the kicker, Jerry Oregon. And then jumping over to help out also defensively on the stop, it looked like it was Collymore. Second and 10, Toronto at their own 48-yard line. Holloway to the air again. Once Greer, he's got him first down. He's just taken Carl Brazley apart on that far side. And it's another first down, a pickup of 12 on the play. And they just can't stop him. The fog is completely lifted here at Exhibition Stadium. And you'll be able to see everything clearly in the second half. We suggested that this might be a pattern that the Argonauts would use after they completed those long passes to Terry Greer. They have used that out pattern successfully. And I think they could just go down the field throw in that pattern right now. They got. Carl Brazley totally confused on that corner. The Rough Riders have decided enough's enough. They were embarrassed in the first half defensively. Donnie Little and Brazley drop back to kick. Dean Dorsey will be in there to do the kicking. 44-yard average this afternoon for Dorsey. He'll hit it at about his own 50. Brazley and Little standing at about the 5 and 10-yard line, respectively. He hangs it high. Brazley at his 5. He's going to try the return. Nice move, and he gets away at the 20, the 25-yard line. Loose football, and Toronto has it. Steve Ackroyd is the man who fell on the football. Fourth turnover of the day for Ottawa. You don't like to see that statistic if you are George Brancato, the head coach of the Rough Riders. First down, Holloway, the reverse to Greer. He's got a picket line forming. Johnson coming up to try to force him, can't get him. And Greer is finally run out of bounds by John Sutton, number 27. You can see it coming. A 
pickup of 15. Charles Johnson, uh, leave actually came up in good position, but he was too far inside, and Greer just put a move on him and then danced around the corner. When you're the defensive end, you have to keep that containment. Jim Piaskowski lost it there, but Terry Greer makes a good play against Charles Johnson. As you mentioned, Kevin, it appeared as though Johnson had broken down in a good football position, ready to make the tackle, but when you have the outstanding speed of a Terry Greer, you can make some people look pretty bad. Second down and 10 from the 19, the quick screen for Greer. He cuts it upfield, and he's inside the 10, and very close to the first down. John Glasper got back to make the tackle, and where they spot it from our vantage point, he has the first down. It is first and goal at the eight. Well, there's Terry Greer, and I, it's tough to fall a guy like him who's had such a great game, but I think if he'd maybe followed his blocking a little better, he could have taken it into the end zone because he had Roland Mangled in the center, number 53, Doug Smith out in front, and really disregarded their blocking. Decided to cut it back in. John Glassford made the play. Well, the crowd has gotten their wish here in Toronto. Bob Obilovich, you see him on the sideline, a look of concern on his face. He's going for it. Third down in Canadian football is your final down of possession. Uh, the end around for Greer. He's got a touchdown, but we've got a flag down. Braisley was the man who was blocked illegally, and there to make the illegal block was Dan Perot, number 69, and the referee saw it clearly. Well, Kevin, you got the good eyes working for you today because you caught that play perfectly. Terry Greer did get into the end zone, but number 69, Dan Ferroni, the offensive left guard of the Argonauts, will be called for holding against the quarterback, Carl Braisley. And once again, mistakes take the Argonauts out of scoring position, and the field goal team will have to come on the field as it's third down. But already Dorsey has been successful on two of three field goal attempts, and this one will be a chip shot for him from about the 19. He's had one blocked, however. He steps into it, gets it off cleanly, and it hit the upright and bounced off. So the Argonauts, with a golden scoring opportunity leap, come away empty-handed. And that is something to remember if Ottawa can mount some kind of a drive in this football game. He's had one block, and as I said, he had to cover a bad snap for a safety. He drives this one, sending the man way back. It's Carinci at about his 15. He trips over perhaps his own man, and now another late hit. Well, it'll, it'll certainly depend on whether he tripped over his own man leap or whether uh, an Ottawa man tripped him up, but it looked like he just tripped and fell, and then the hit was made, and they were whistled for the... You are looking live at Exhibition Stadium, Toronto, Ontario. Kevin Slayton and Leif Pedersen, along with some beautiful scenery here in Toronto, Ontario. Leif? Well, when we have a break of the action, that's not a bad way to fill time. They're the Toronto cheerleaders. They do a great job, but... You and I don't mind having a look at those pretty young ladies out here at Exhibition Stadium in Toronto. Of course, we're keeping our mind on business. 8.40 left in the third quarter, 29 to nothing. Toronto leading it over the Ottawa Rough Riders. The battle to represent the Eastern Conference at the Grey Cup. You may be keeping your mind on business, <laughs> but for about 30 seconds here, I'm going to deviate for a second. I lost my train of thought momentarily. And at any rate... The cheerleaders entertaining the crowd of better than 40,000. And Condridge Holloway has had a hand in entertaining this crowd this afternoon. Better than 360 yards. So he'll be punting to either Donnie Little or Carl Braisley. An end over end job, not his best effort. It takes a Toronto bounce. And now Braisley picks it up, looks for somewhere to go, and there's no place to go. Flag is down. Down there to make the hit for Toronto was Don Moyne. Well, there you see the AstroTurf here at Exhibition Stadium, and there's a rip in it. There's a lot of seams throughout this AstroTurf, and some of the players at certain times have complained that they could catch their cleats in there. It appears as though maybe that's what happened to Greg Marshall, and it appears as though Zach Henderson, who has not returned to the lineup, caught his leg in there and has stretched knee ligaments in one of those seams. Isaac will throw from his own 29-yard line. Sneaks it over the middle, and Reed really takes a hit from Jackson. Ed Jackson, 6'3", 220 bonder from Louisiana Tech. Drilled Reed. So the Argos will go at it first and 10 from their own 35-yard line with 5.50 left in the third quarter. You're watching live from Toronto. There is Zach Henderson leading on the crutches. Uh, you mentioned a moment ago, Lee, the first and second play of the game. He made a ferocious hit on Reed and caught his leg in the seam and stretched some knee ligaments. There is Donnie Little, number 10. 
folks in Austin, Texas, very proud of their alum. The quick pitch to Walker. He's got interference out in front of him. He heads to the corner of the end zone and is in. So Ottawa is on the scoreboard with just 37 seconds left in the third quarter. And for them, that is a big lift. Well, we suggested that the Argonauts not let the Ottawa Rough Riders off the hook. They let them get into the end zone. Watch the great block. 68 Val Belcher, 64 Tim Hook, the right tackle. And Skip Walker follows that blocking perfectly. There it is. He knows how to set up those blockers, and he's into the end zone with Ottawa's first touchdown of the ball game. And look out, 29 points is a lot, but Ottawa's starting to put something together. Defense has played well, and now the offense has come through. Oregon on for the extra point. A bad snap. He gets it up. Let's wait and see. Did he kick it through or not? I've not seen any, any indication from the referee. Now they say it is good. A snap bounced to the halter, and Oregon was able to kick it through there anyway. So Ottawa leads it 29 to 7, and will return for more live football action after this. Oregon, number 71, getting set to boot it. And there they go. They loft it high for the far side. Carinci is over there, and he makes the catch. He was tackled by Donnie Little at about the 45 yard line, so they tried it. But perhaps he kicked it a little bit too far, Lee. This will be the last play of the third quarter. The inside handoff to Newman on the slot back reverse. Newman with a great move. Gets inside the 40. Brazley brings it down. Loose football. And it's going to be off to Toronto. So that is the end of the third quarter. Toronto with a big play from David Newman. Stadium for the fourth quarter right after this. We are back live at Exhibition Stadium, Toronto, Ontario. Kevin Slayton along with Lee Pedersen. This is the Eastern Conference Championship game. Toronto leading Ottawa 29 to 7 as we begin the fourth quarter. Don't forget, second part of our doubleheader today on ESPN. Live with Fred White and Paul McGuire, Edmonton and Winnipeg will do battle for that Western Conference Championship. Of course, Edmonton, the four-time defending Grey Cup champions. And the Toronto Argonauts are battling the Rough Riders here. One of these teams will hope that they have a say in uh, derailing that Edmonton Express. Dean Dorsey is on, number 12 for Toronto, out of Currency's hold. It'll be a 47-yard attempt. He is two out of four already today. He bangs this one. He may have enough distance on it, but it's off to the side. And so Brazley touching it back in his own end zone, not returning it. That gives Toronto a point. You can get a point on a missed field goal in Canadian football. And Brazley touched it down on the end zone. Many of our viewers, Leaf, would wonder why he didn't attempt to run it out. Well, that's true, and once again, here's the move on isolation by Terry Greer, turning Carl Brace, Brazley around, he makes the catch, but unfortunately out of bounds, just ran out of territory. But as you mentioned, Kevin, that is true in the Canadian Football League, a single point can be made on a missed field goal, as well as a punt into the end zone that is not returned. When that single point is given up, the ball comes out to the spot that the field goal was missed if it's outside the 35-yard line. Walker with a gaping hole over the right side. He's up near midfield before he's pulled down. First down for Ottawa. Why would Brazley elect to give away the point in that situation? Leap, you're already trailing 29 to seven. Well, I think that only makes it 23 as opposed to 22 points. And really to get that field position, it came back out to the original line of scrimmage. And I think that being the case, a much easier spot on the field for their offense to operate from. Flips out of North Texas State, first and 10, Ottawa at the 32 of Toronto. Isaac will throw, he better get out of there, he's in trouble, and down he goes. Rick Moore caught him from behind. The one thing that Ottawa has going against them, of course, is the clock and the score. 30 to 7, Toronto, 9-15 left. He's got to throw it. Heavy rush, he gets away. Coming from that defensive tackle position, Chris Isaac slowing up. He cannot cross that line of scrimmage, of course, before he's throwing the football. And this enables the scavenge to come in from behind and put enough pressure, put the hit on him. So that pass fell incomplete, short of the receiver. Toronto Argonauts 
really dominating the Ottawa Rough Riders. It would have been interesting to see and Ottawa scored on that possession, tightened this game up a little bit, but now the job is for the Toronto Argonauts to try and play ball control here and eat up that clock. And they'll do it with the aerial game, the quick screen to Greer. It's been successful all day. A fine tackle, a shoe top tackle by Ricky Barton. And that saved it from Greer gaining about 15 more because he had lots of folks with him in blue jerseys on the near side. The one difficult thing when you live by the pass is that when it gets to this time in a ball game, when you want to chew up those seconds on the clock and you have to go to that running game and you haven't got the good eyes working for you, you must have got lots of sleep last night because <laughs> you spotted that they did not pick up the first down. Of course, Ottawa declining the penalty and they will retain possession, or exact, excuse me, they will get possession of the football after the Toronto punt. You saw the attendance better than 40,000 on hand in very eerie, gloomy weather today. Rain starting to fall. It's been a gentle and high kind of day. It began under heavy fog in light rain. By halftime, the fog said adios. The sun came out. Now here in the fourth quarter, it's starting to pour. Isaac will put it in the air. For Avery, it is intercepted by Jojo Heath. Heath across midfield. by Jojo Heath. Jeff Avery falls down on the play, slips on that slippery turf, and Jojo Heath nevertheless makes a good play. He had the good coverage and nice effort to get down that sidelines. And he's in his first year with the Toronto Argonauts, as I mentioned, from the University of Pittsburgh, and what a tremendous play that was. Well, it's been 30 years since Toronto won a Grey Cup. Way back in Skip Walker tries to get to the outside. Straight arms one man and is brought down as he gets to the near sideline. John Pointer, number 37, was the man who finally brought the big bull down. Quarterback now, number 17, Joe Barnes from Texas Tech. This 
is Joe's seventh year in the league, and you hear the fans giving him a bit of an ovation as he hasn't had a great deal of playing time this year. Well, he's going to limber up the rusty arm, fires down the middle, he's got his man complete, and some wide open field out there. Jeff Townsend may break it. Some nifty moves, look at him go, he's going to the far corner. Jeff Townsend puts icing on the cake, and Joe Barnes is one and half. and you're a Toronto Argonaut fan, you have to be happy with the events that have taken place here this afternoon. There you see head coach Bob Abilovich. What a tremendous job he and his coaching staff have done with this team. 2-14 and 14 last year, this year an appearance next week in the Grey Cup. Hopefully for them to end 30 years of frustration. That's the last time they won a Grey Cup. The pass on the far side was incomplete. Darrell Wilson was defending, but the receiver, Carl Powell, slipped and fell. So with a minute 56 left, we're going to take a break here from Exhibition Stadium. The Toronto crowd is going crazy. We'll be back with more 